Officially launching on June 19th, 2022, the Feast of Corpus Christi, and leading up to a National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, Indiana in 2024, the National Eucharistic Revival is a major undertaking of the U.S. bishops that hopes to see a movement of Catholics across the United States healed, converted, formed, and unified by an encounter with Jesus Christ in the Eucharist and sent out in mission for the life of the world. Bishop Andrew Cousins of the Diocese of Crookston, Minnesota, is chairman of the Committee on Evangelization and Catechesis and is leading the National Eucharistic Revival. Here's a look at our conversation on the Eucharistic Revival and what it means for the Church in the United States. Well, Bishop, thank you for taking the time. I'm excited to talk to you about the Eucharistic Revival, the whole effort. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm delighted to, to have the time and delighted to share, especially with the Knights of Columbus and this important work. Great. Why don't we just start by just saying, what is the Eucharistic Revival? Maybe give us a short summary of it. Yes, the Eucharistic Revival is a program that is deni designed to help renew the Church in the United States by inviting Catholics into a living relationship with Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And it's really a three-year program that we hope will affect the Church at every level in the United States and therefore bring about what we hope will be a large renewal of Eucharistic faith, and really that living relationship with Jesus that comes through the Eucharist. Why now? Why do this at this point? You know, there are a lot of reasons why we're doing it right now. And, um, you know, the first reason that everybody points to was the now famous Pew study that came out in September of 2019. And that study... Uh, was a disturbing fact for many people, and especially many bishops. And it seemed to say, if it's accurate, that as many as 70% of Catholics do not believe or at least don't understand the Church's teaching on Jesus' real presence in the Eucharist. And so that pointed to a real crisis in Eucharistic faith. And so that caused the bishops really to begin to think about, wow, what are we doing to deal with this crisis that's happening in our country? And of course, we knew the crisis was already happening because we were watching and have seen for many years the struggle of disaffiliation and the many people who have decided for different reasons they don't need the Eucharist. And then you add, after that, the COVID-19 crisis, which uh, really became a huge crisis for all of society and affected us all in so many ways. But one of the ways it affected us is people coming to Mass and the whole question of did we lose a certain percentage of people who just stopped coming because they didn't understand how much they needed the Eucharist. So those are kind of what I would call the negative reasons for doing this, but there are many positive reasons for doing this. And, you know, the church has always recognized that when you have this incredible gift of Jesus in the Eucharist, that at different moments we need to reverence that gift more, and we need to hold that gift up, and we need to remind ourselves what a gift it is. And this is what the spirit of revival is. You know, you've talked about it being a process, a three-year thing. It's got a national meeting. It's got different themes each year. Maybe just walk us through briefly what those sort of phases are and why they're in the order they're in. Yeah, so it's, it's a, it's a three-year process that we hope will affect the church at every level. And so we start with a diocesan year, which will begin June 19th, 2022, this coming Feast of Corpus Christi. And we hope it'll begin with Eucharistic processions around the country. And this year, we're going to really focus on diocesan leaders and those people who we believe already understand the, the Church's teaching on the Eucharist, but we want to invite them to re-enliven their own faith, come to deeper catechesis, and really turn them into Eucharistic missionaries. And so this first year is an opportunity for dioceses to do events all around the diocese, to have renewal days for priests, to have renewal days for uh, diocesan leaders. Having participated in those, I'm now being equipped for the second year, which is the parish year. And this is where we want to reach deepest into the church. And that year will culminate in the National Eucharistic Congress. Now, this is going to be a very special moment. We have not had a National Eucharistic Congress in this country for almost 50 years. And so at the summer of 2024, in the middle of July there, July 17 to 21, we're going to invite Catholics from all over the country to come to Indianapolis to come together around the Eucharist. And we really hope that that will be a moment that spiritually impacts the whole country and that uh, many different people from all different lives, families, certainly the Knights of Columbus, all different kinds of young people will come together for this large event. 
And then that will begin what we hope is a real missionary conversion. Another key dimension of the whole revival are Eucharistic processions. So this is a big part, this is something we in the Knights, we love them, we're good at them, we're really excited about getting behind this, but maybe you could say something about why are Eucharistic, why is taking Jesus around on a walk so important to proper adoration, to proper reverence, and to just deepening our understanding of the Eucharist? Yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful that the Knights have gotten behind this whole movement of Eucharistic processions because it's a very important part of the National Eucharistic Revival. Jesus says, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. And it's fitting, the church says, especially it says it's fitting on the, on the solemnity of Corpus Christi that we would lift up Jesus in the Eucharist and process him around. And it's a way of both proclaiming what we believe about Jesus in the Eucharist, that we believe this is the Lord, and that we want to honor him, and we want to praise him, and we want to show the world what we believe. 